So as you can see, there's a low pressure zone building up here, which might lead to a cold front moving from the south to the north. Meanwhile, Hurricane Huracan is battering the west Gavin, coast. Gavin, 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 what are you even going on about? We've got a bunch of SUVs lined up here for a reason, right? Well, clearly that was a weather report. And the weather is actually very important for what we've got planned today because the worst kind of weather is the best kind of weather. And that's because after a brief hiatus, Autocar Off-Road Day is back. And we've got nine SUVs lined up, which we are going to put through a bunch of obstacles. And the bare minimum requirement for it is the 4x4 ability. So without any further ado, let's go get mucked up. Now it's time to meet the contenders. Like I said, the bare minimum requirement is four-wheel drive. But we also narrowed it down to those SUVs which have some sort of off-road intent. So, sorry soft roaders, you do not make the cut. And that brings us on to the nine that did make the cut. Interestingly, the two softest SUVs here are from off-roading giant Jeep. The Compass is back, it is more focused Trailhawk guys this time. And then there's the Meridian, which is a seven-seater that promises to still have that Jeep DNA. Also returning from the last time is the Isuzu D-Max V-Cross. This time with its newer 1.9-litre diesel engine. And then we have a few grudge matches lined up. Thar vs Gurkha. Both in their second generation, these focused off-roaders have become more usable but also stayed just as committed than ever to providing serious off-roading ability at an affordable price. The new Scorpio N is here, which wraps the traditional tough ladder frame from the Thar in a layer of modern comforts and that includes a new set of off-road modes. And since Mahindra says it can now compete with D-segment SUVs, we've brought back the king of the D-segment, the Toyota Fortuner. And finally, the absolute titans of off-roading, the Land Rover Defender here in its short wheelbase 90 guys and the Jeep Wrangler, which we have in its hardcore Rubicon spec. Now, of course, all these cars aren't direct rivals, but one look at their off-road bragging stats and you can tell they're all packing a bit more than your average family crossover. Which of these would you pick to go on an off-road adventure? Let us know down in the comments and be sure to like this video, share it with your friends and if you haven't done so already, subscribe to the Autocar India YouTube channel. Oh, and one more thing before we go ahead, a moment of silence, please, for those that could not be with us at Off-Road Day 2022. Right, so what will we be putting these 4x4s through? We've come to learn Off-Road's sprawling facility in Pali, Maharashtra, where its founder, Dr. Tejas Kotari and his team have curated three obstacles for the SUVs to go through. They will also be our guides, teaching us how best to tackle these off-road challenges. So let's hear it from the man himself. Hi, my name is Dr. Tejas Kothari and I'm Asia's only four-wheel drive certified trainer by the I4WDTA and I run an off-road training school here near Pali called Learn Off-Road. The first challenge is going to be an articulation challenge where we're going to test the articulation of the vehicles and or we're going to test how well the diff locks and the traction control works. The second obstacle is a side slope ability, how much your car can tilt to one side and the third one is going to be a downhill with a very technical rutted uphill climb so that will ensure that your car also has the stability and the power to pull you up this little gradient. Sounds simple enough when he says it, but the reality is a whole lot different. And you know how I said the worst weather is the best weather? Well, I should maybe have kept my mouth shut. And just so you know, apart from the Gurkha which came with the optional mud terrain or empty tyres, all the cars here are stock. The only modification we made was reducing the air pressure to 18 psi to give them a wider contact patch. With weather like this, it was clear that the trail surface wasn't going to stay solid for very long. So we made it a point to send in the softer SUVs first and save the really hardcore off-roaders for last. Starting with the Jeep Meridian. So this is perhaps the softest yeah. car of the lot, the Jeep Meridian, which is funny because it's a Jeep and yeah, it's, it's, it's 
usually set for this sort of thing. It's also got quite a long wheelbase. So let's see how it does with the articulation. Constant throttle. Constant. It nearly made it to the end, but ultimately the electronics cutting power is what killed that last bit of momentum we needed to pull the Meridian out. It put up a good effort, but ultimately we had to retire the Meridian from this obstacle. Could the more focused Compass Trailhawk do better? So the shorter wheelbase and the you know, slightly yeah. greater approach angle might help us out here. Or not. <laughs> oh no. Like in the Meridian, it was the electronics cutting power that prevented the Trailhawk from getting out, which happened on our next attempt too. Constant, constant. I'm a constant, I haven't moved it. It's cutting power on its own. So no, the Trailhawk couldn't do it either. And that made us start to realize just how intense the first obstacle really was. Now on to the tough stuff, starting with the Isuzu V-Cross. It might look like the odd duck out being the only pickup of this bunch, but with a ladder frame, low range 4x4 and a tough, no frills approach to recreational off-roading, it couldn't be more at home here. So we're gonna need a little more momentum to cross it. As expected, it's a bit of a struggle. Back out. <laughs> reverse out. This also being a pickup truck, there's no weight over the back, so rear traction is a little bit less than your average SUV. Come on, come on, come on. There, with a lot of momentum, but as you see, it went a little sideways. And now, it's time for a car that's built just to do this, the Mahindra Thar. Right, uh, it's got a diff lock which obviously will engage on its own once it senses that it's losing traction. I love that despite all the modernities in this car, like the touchscreen and the off-road displays, it's still very much a thar, you know? Absolutely. It's so comfortable, unlike the previous one. Yeah. But it can still do this. I was saying, <laughs> spoke too soon. Let's just reverse it a bit. And here we go. Not quite the direction we hope to exit from, but we but exited nonetheless. By hook or crook, it still did it. So it turns out the slightly worn tyres on this car aren't quite as grippy as we hoped. Next up, the Thar's main adversary, which as we mentioned has come here today with a bit of an unfair advantage. Non-standard mud terrain tyres. Even without them though, it's tough as hell and it turns out you have to be as well just to set things up. All mechanically engaged, so let me start doing that now. Engaging the diff locks especially requires a lot of heft and maybe even a helping hand. But eventually... Alright, we've got all the diff locks on. Mechanically done. I need to go to the gym, I think. It's a forceful Gurkha, not the force Gurkha. Please edit that out. Yeah. Come on, big guy. Right, turn right, yeah, yeah, yeah. Keep on power. Okay, go. Done. Well done, Gurkha. Well, although this one, the this Gurkha that we're driving right now, it's got off-road tires. It still has the advantage. The thing is, it's got so much more difficult out there. It's so slippery. There's no traction at all. Yet, of course, with all the gadgetry, the Gurkha made it through. And now, fresh off the boat, the all-new Mahindra Scorpio N. And that's four wheel low and let's slick through the drive modes. We've got mud and ruts. That's what we that's need. Awesome. That's what we need. Put it down to the fresh tires or just how plain capable the Scorpio N is off-road. But it did it flawlessly on its first try. Alright, right and wiggle power, 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 power. 
And success! That was a good one. That was well done. Super. I might just uh, finally agree with the big daddy of SUVs tag. <laughs> Next up was the Toyota Fortuner. But as we were setting up, there was a problem. The electronically actuated rear diff lock simply would not engage despite several attempts. Yup, something malfunctioned on a Fortuner. So it made it almost to the very end but ultimately just couldn't cut it. Maybe with newer tyres and a working rear diff lock it would have. Ah well, I guess even champions have their off days. Now on to the big guns, starting with the mighty Land Rover Defender 90. And this is I think by far the most sophisticated car in, in, in this list and... In terms of electronics and gadgetry, yes. Please approach with some dignity. This is just the traction control, cutting power. A few tweaks to the settings later, however. We were worried initially that the Defender's all-terrain tyres wouldn't quite cut it, but with hardware and software like it has, we shouldn't have been. And finally, Jeep of the Jeeps itself, the Rubicon. Apart from getting mud terrain tyres as standard, it has serious off-road hardware like two diff locks, and you can even disconnect the front anti-roll bar for max articulation. There we go. We're good. I think this is the most comprehensive off-road package uh, of this lot for sure. It is. So, let's give it a go and see how it fares. Articulation. Of course, a piece of cake. Walk in the park, Gavin. What do you say? Absolutely, nothing has done it quite as easily as that. Well, that was certainly way tougher than we imagined, but it served well to separate the wheat from the chaff amongst these off-roaders. Thankfully, obstacle 2 doesn't seem as daunting. In the Jeep Meridian, the gradient I'm told is between 25 to 30 degrees. So let's see how the Jeep Meridian fares on this one. Here we go. I know it doesn't sound like much <laughs> when you say 25 to 30 degrees, but once you're in it and you're at this angle, it's yeah, a lot. It means a lot. And because it's mucking, and all right, it sort of has find, found its spot in the ruts here. So I think the aim of the game is to find the rut and just stick into it. And power out. Yeah. Not bad at all, not bad at all. First try did it. Well done, Meridian. Super. That seems simple enough. Shouldn't be too much of a problem for the arguably more focused Compass Trailhawk. Power through, power through. Hold, hold power. Hold power, hold power, constant power. Yes. Yeah, constant. Come on, g -po. First time unlucky, I guess, but a bit more momentum and... Superb! A little bit of struggle, but it made it. I can feel the ground deteriorating beneath me. <laughs> As for the D-Max, Tejas is concerned its unequal weight distribution and lack of serious off-road hardware might make it struggle. So he asks us to take it easy. Turns out, however, all it needed was a solid bootful. Already applying a lot of lock. Momentum, go, 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 momentum, momentum, go for it. Go, 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 go. Yeah. There you go. Little bit of a thump on the way out, but first time, not yeah. bad. But yeah, I see what he meant. It was no hard holding. Now back in the Thar, and this time there was no hesitation like there was in the first obstacle. Now let's just see how well the adventure statistics uh, screen, the display that you have on the new Thar works on the side incline. 
Well, you as my co-passenger can do that for me, please, because Absolutely. I am paying attention to what's going on here. Please do. That has gone to about 24. So, yeah. Easy, gently out. I like that. As for the Gurkha, well, i let Gavin's expression tell you how that went. Well, it does really feel like you're sitting on top of a ladder in his car. <laughs> there you go. Um, it's got this mechanical purity that I don't think many of the others have. It's, some might call it basic, but when you're pulling yourself out of a side incline obstacle, it feels mm, nice. <laughs> And frankly, you don't feel as bad hitting stuff with this car as you would in like oh. slightly more expensive cars. <laughs> yeah, yeah, not at all. Obstacle number two for the Scorpio N and it was another perfect performance with the big Mahindra dipping in and crawling out without much effort at all. Now into obstacle 2 with the Fortuner and riding so high up, it does kind of feel like we might topple over. Now the faulty rear diff lock wouldn't be too much of an issue here and ultimately it's the Toyota's meaty 500nm of torque that forced the heavy SUV out. Is that some sunshine? Yeah, big boy! And then it was time for perhaps the most comfortable way to exit a trench. We sit so high up in this car, the visibility outside is absolutely rocking right up front. And, oh, I mean, so far, I think this is the only one which has done it most smoothly, oh without gosh, any yeah. effort, nothing, you know, kicking in in between. It was just one smooth go. So, hands down, so far for me, it's been the defender on the side incline. I mean, all these cars are really tough, but this one has air suspension. So even when it takes you over, over the edge, it's so gentle. And while Gavin was marvelling at just how comfy the Land Rover was, I quickly hopped into the Wrangler. Alright, the Jeep Wrangler on the side incline. At this point, I don't know. Is there anything it can't do? I, I know. I know exactly what you're saying. It, Looks very, very simple for the Wrangler and it should be as well. Let's just try it nice and slow without any effort. It was so close. Now, now it's just showing off. You know, when you when you do off-road obstacles so slowly and gingerly means you don't have to try. Exactly. It's just showing off. <laughs> well, that was certainly easier than the first one. Or maybe we had just gotten warmed up. And as for the final obstacle, well, it looks like just a small dip. How difficult could that be? Once again, I should maybe learn to keep my mouth shut. In the two smaller Jeeps, because of their relatively low ground clearance, it's important to not let them slip into the big ruts, or else they would beach. So it's a test of balancing momentum and precision to get up and out. I do have my fingers crossed that it does make it, but I'm not super confident because this is really tricky and it's just been raining more and more. No luck, unfortunately. And with the sun going down and the trail getting ever more damaged, we elect to retire the Meridian for now. Will we have more luck in the compass? So what we're doing now is a bit of a descent uh, followed by an incline. Yep. And it doesn't look too bad when you, when, when you, until you get right up close, which I have right now here in the compass yeah. trailhawk. I've got hill descent control on, so I'm just gonna let it do its thing. And now for the climb. The Trailhawk's chopped bumper gives it a better approach angle so it cleared the dip with ease. But like its siblings, struggled to make it up the steepest part of the slope. And after a couple of failed attempts, we thought it best to pasture it too. Okay, so 
we've given it a shot yeah. both of us unfortunate that uh, trailhawk refuses to climb this one the thing is it starts out easily enough but it gets quite technical towards the end of it because it's narrow it's slippery and you got to find a very small window of traction absolutely and the right amount of momentum without having to you know yeah. sort of damage the underbody it's not always about clearing the obstacle fully what is the point if you're going to damage the vehicle and you know make it across the point so it's also about vehicle preservation which is equally important so will the hardy but bare bones pickup truck have better luck and here we go in the isuzu d max v cross fingers crossed more ground clearance more momentum let's see Awesome. We crossed. Not bad. We crossed. So if the Isuzu did it, it shouldn't be much of a challenge for a pro off-roader like the Thar, right? Yeah, like. Yeah, actually, yeah. Well done. Super. There we go. Little bit technical, but yeah. Got it. Taking a slightly less technical and more sledgehammer approach to the obstacle is the Force Gurkha. down the descent in the gurkha first gear all diffs locked low range and just no braking it's so easy i feel like if i if i don't stop now it'll just keep climbing with that momentum but i'm going to line it up keep going keep going yeah and the piece of cake that massive ground clearance off road tires and of course the low ratio easy does it now will it be 3 for 3 flawless victories for the scorpio n all right all right little bit of drama there but just some light terraforming that's what you do pretty easy i must say and more comfortable definitely Will we have it just as easy in the Toyota? Well, the visibility out of the Fortuner, I've always appreciated. It's always easy to place your wheels and see for all the clearances. And you lined it up. And nicely cleared it almost. Spoke too soon. and a little tricky there but got her out but you're right about the ground clearance it really makes a huge difference uh, i could tell the way the the fortuna crested the the, the top of the hill right. uh, with just so much more confidence you can exactly so you can speed. come it a lot better and now the great british monument itself the defender so the big plush comfy defender i almost don't want to do this because I feel like it's going to go on a nice relaxing drive with it but then on the other hand i look down this bonnet look at those serrated <laughs> trims and yeah you know what this is meant to do <laughs> stuff like this okay line it up with the ascent now again i'm aiming for that corner yeah yeah okay yeah that was class that was just like that's the thing i like about the defender i mean through the day mm -hmm. it's been doing stuff in a very classy fashion yeah. keeping us in comfort that's why probably they call it the gentleman's off roader <laughs> absolutely i mean put some mud rain tires on this thing and it would oh, be man. absolutely unstoppable it will just take it to another level rahul somehow managed to beat me to the punch on the wrangler again but frankly at this point i just want to enjoy the ride man at this point in this car i feel like i can take a nap even through an obstacle like this it's just Let, so easy. let's try this Alright, I'll see you in a bit. Yeah. So as you can see, Gavin's napping. All right, Gavin. Did you did you feel that? I heard a light brushing noise. What is that? That are just some branches brushing against the car, but that that's about it. I couldn't tell if it started or finished or anything. <laughs> it might as well have been stationary. 
Eventually, we even took the Meridian and Trailhawk back out and with a bit of forcefulness, even they made it up the perilous hill. As the day comes to an end, all nine cars emerge battle-hardened and browner than they began the day. It's safe to say Tejas really put us through the ringer and weather acted as its own difficulty multiplier. Sorry, I guess. So is there a real winner of the day? A best 4x4 SUV? Well, the Wrangler is all but unstoppable and the Defender is the epitome of Land Rover's plush through the mush approach to off-roading. The Fortuna and Isuzu are returning favourites with a tweak or two. The Gurkha remains one for the absolutely hardcore, while the Thar brings that original enthusiasm to a much bigger crowd. The Meridian and the Trailhawk, meanwhile, are perfect for the casual enthusiast who might need to tread over some rough ground occasionally. The Scorpio N made a strong case for itself and has successfully made the transition to premium SUV while only building on its predecessor's off-road capability. The bottom line is this. Recreational off-roading has never been easier to get into. Not just because there are now tracks and academies to go to, but also because there are so many great four-wheel drive SUVs on the market across a wide price range. So yes, you don't have to be an extremely technical off-roader to have a bit of fun in the mud on a rainy day, but boy is it fun when you do. And I'll have to agree with Gavin, the worst kind of weather is the best kind of weather.